Hello, my name is Ewan, and today I'll be showing you how to use custom model data in Minecraft Java 1.21.4. This tutorial is for Snapshot 24W45A, which changed how custom model data works, but this should be the same in the full release of 1.21.4 and beyond. So let's click play and get into the game. There we go, now I'm in the game, it's ready to test it for when our pack is actually ready. The first thing we need to do is actually make our resource pack. And to do that, we need to go to our resource packs folder. So if I go to options, resource packs, and then open pack folder, that will open a file explorer window in our resource packs folder. Another way of getting here is clicking in the bar at the top and going percent app data percent and hitting enter. That will take us to our app data roaming folder. We can then find dot Minecraft and resource packs. If you already know how to make a resource pack, you can set up a basic template resource pack. But what I'm going to do for speed is I'm going to use my Blockbench plugin, Resource Pack Utilities. So in Blockbench, if I go to File, Plugins, and then search for Resource Pack Utilities, you can see it here. I have that installed already. Then go to Tools, Resource Pack Utilities, and Pack Creator. Here I can name my pack, so I'm going to name it Custom Model Data. And this, you, then you select your version. So it's not 1.21.3, this is a snapshot I'm on. So you select the version, and then I'm just going to give it the same description, or by UN. There we go. And for speed, I can also just make a models and textures folder. There we go. Create. It's made our pack. Done. If we now go to the folder, we see we've got our pack here. So we see our pack structure has the assets, MC Meta, and PNG. The PNG is optional, but it's just the icon that we see here. So let's open this file, and then you'll see this file here, if we open in a text editor, it has our pack format, which you either find out yourself, or if you use pack creator, it'll just make it for you in the correct one, and our description. So we can ignore that, we can change the image if we want to, but I'm not going to. And then we're going to open the assets folder, and the Minecraft folder. For custom model data, in 1.21.4 and beyond, it's changed. Items now have their custom model data defined through a special item file. So we're going to make a new folder in the Minecraft folder, and we're going to call it items. Let's open this, and now we're going to make a JSON file for the item that we want to apply this to. I'm going to do the mace. So I'm going to make a new text document and name it mace.json. Yes, I want to change the file extension. Let's open this file in a text editor. For text editors, you can use Notepad, but I recommend something a bit better, such as Sublime Text, which is what I use, or you could use Notepad++ or even VS Code. So in here, this is the item definition, which tells the game which models to load and when. So we need to start off with two curly brackets. We're then going to put in quotes, and we're going to write model. And this will define the models. The type, we need to set type to select. This will tell the game that it's going to select between different options. The property is custom model data. This is the property it's going to be selecting based off of. The next thing we're going to set is the fallback model. This is the model it will use if none of the cases are met. So let's add fallback. And in the fallback, we need type model. This means the type of fallback that this is, is a model. And then we can set the model to item slash miss. So when none of the conditions are met, it's going to load the normal item mace model. That's the mace.json file inside the item folder inside the vanilla assets. After the fallback, we're going to add our cases. So this is just quotes, cases, colon, square brackets for a list, because there can be multiple cases. Inside this list here, we'll add some curly brackets again. And then in here is our first condition. So let's type in when. So when the custom model data is our chosen value, it's going to apply the model defined in this first case here. So when, colon, quotes, and I'm going to do bat. If you've done custom model data before, you will remember that old custom model data had to be a number. In the new custom model data, you can do numbers, but you can also do text. If you still want to do numbers, I'm not covering that in that, this video, but it is a different formatting to this. But I'm showing you how to do it based on text because I think that's easier to remember and also use. Let's do when it is bat, comma, 
And then this is the model it's going to use. So model colon curly brackets. And then this bit here is the exact same as the fallback. So we got type model and model is the thing. So in there, the type of model that it's going to be using is a model. And the model it's going to be using is not the item mace. We're going to make a new one called item bat. And then we can save it. This is the item definition finished. So it's a model. It's type select, so it'll be selecting between multiple things. The property it's selecting off of is custom model data. The fallback, so the normal one, is a model, and its model is the mace. So when none of the cases are met, it's going to be a mace. And we only have one case, but we have a list of cases. When it's a bat, its model is going to be a model, and it's going to be the bat model in the item folder. I will have this pack available as a template. So if you if you get stuck at any point, you can just download this pack and you can use that as a template. One important thing to note is when you're writing the JSON, remember you need quotes around all of these. You need quotes around all your values, unless it's a number, but I don't have a number here, so that doesn't matter. And at the end of every line, you need a comma, unless it is the last thing in its block. So this one doesn't have a comma because there's nothing after it. The next thing is the closing bracket from up here. So just remember that when you're writing the JSON. If you your JSON doesn't work in game, we can go to a website called JSONLint. And in here, we can copy this in and click validate and it will tell us if it's valid or not. If I add an extra comma, for example, it's going to tell us there's an error on this line. If I forget a comma, it's going to tell us there's an error on this line. So you can use this to check if your structure is, if your JSON is actually valid. So now that we've done the item definition, we need to add our new model. You might be thinking, but I don't want a new model, I want a new texture. The textures still use models. The model just tells the game what to render. It could be a 3D model or it could be a 2D texture, but either way, you still need a texture. I'm going to leave this at the side for now. So back in our resource pack, we're going to go to the Minecraft folder. We're going to go to the models folder. If you don't have this, just make that folder. And then in here, I'm going to make an item folder. This item folder matches this here. If you want to put something different, you can. I would recommend just keeping it an item. So in the item folder, we need a bat model. So let's make a new text document, bat.json, yes. And then let's open that. So this is going to be our bat model. If we were making a custom 3D model, I would make this in block bench, but because I'm not, I'm just going to write it out. Let's start with some curly brackets. And then the first thing we need is a parent model. So the parent model is the model that R1 is based on. So the parent for this is item slash generated. The generated model is a special model in vanilla Minecraft, which will render a 2D texture into a 3D item in game. So rather than being a flat plane, it'll get the depth of one pixel. The next thing I need to define is the textures it's going to use. So textures, colon, curly brackets, and then in here, the only texture on the generated model. So the textures list here, the textures that exist here depend on the parent. On the generated model, it's called layer one. No, it's not. It's called layer zero. So layer zero, colon, and then this is just item slash bat. This is the texture path. This item folder is not the same as this item folder. And this item folder, again, is not the same as this item folder. This is the textures one. For the textures, it does matter where you put it. You can either put it in the block folder or the item folder. If you try to put it anywhere else, it will fail to load unless you do some extra stuff in your resource pack. But I'm not covering that today. So I would just recommend putting it in the block or the item folder. So now we have our model set up. Let's go into the micro folder again. And now to the textures folder. In here, let's make a new folder called item. Remember this item folder matches this one here. Open this item folder. And then here is where we put our bat texture. I've already made one, so I'm going to copy that in. We have bat.png. Let's turn on icons so we can see it. There we go, bat.png. It's an amazing texture, yes. So that should be our resource pack complete. If I go in game, my pack is here. If it doesn't appear here, you can go out of the menu and go back in and it might appear. If it doesn't, you can just hit F3 and T to reload your packs and then it might appear in the list then. So I'm going to apply this pack, done. 
and I'm going to grab a mace item. You'll notice the mace has not changed. That's because custom model data doesn't modify the original item. Instead, we've added a new type to this item that we can activate through the custom model data. So to access that, I need to use the custom model data in the give command. So if I do slash give add p or your username, and then I want the mace. To do the custom model data, I need a square bracket. Custom model data, it should help It should help you here by pre-filling it, custom model data. And then the custom model data has changed again since the last updates. We put curly brackets, open and closed, and we can close it with a square bracket. Inside the curly brackets, we need strings. This is the list of texts that your custom model data could be. You could put multiple on the same item. I don't know why you would, but you can. So strings, colon, then we need a list, which is the square brackets. In here, we need some quotes. Let's put some single quotes. And then in the quotes, we put our text, so bat. Then when I give myself the item, it's changed texture. There's a horse. Perfect way to test it. So we've got our bat, we've got our horse. We can smack the horse with the bat. So that is how you can do custom model data using text to give yourself an item texture. I'm now going to show you how you do it if it was a 3D model instead of just a 2D texture. So let's go back to our resource pack. Let's go to the items. I'm going to do this on a different item. But if we wanted to add another one to the same item, let's say we can copy this and then comma paste. We can do when test model is item diamond sword, for example, right? If we then go in here, we can just give ourselves the same one, but we can put it as test. And then that did not work. I have not reloaded the pack yet. F3T. There we go. So now it's changed to the diamond sword. So that, that's how you do more than one in the same thing. You just add more cases. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the new one on a different item. So let's just, let's just copy paste this one for speed and let's do it on the dirt block. So let's call it dirt, open that. Let's delete this extra case. This model is going to be uh, block dirt. That's the default one is block dirt, but I'm going to make a hat. So when it's hat, I'm going to re render the model item hat. If I go in game and give myself this item early, so let's get the previous command, let's change the test to hat, and let's change the item to dirt. You will see it's a missing block at the moment, so we need to add to the model now. And I'm going to do this in Blockbench this time, because it's going to be a 3D model. So let's open Blockbench, let's make a new Java block item, create new model, and... So now that we've got our model, we need to first save our texture to the pack, so let's click save. Dot Minecraft, you can get to the dot Minecraft folder with the percent app data, resource packs, custom model data assets, Minecraft textures, item, hat, save. You just want to make sure that you go to the properties and that it is in the folder item. Confirm. And then you can go file, export, export block item model. We want it in our resource pack, custom model data, assets, Minecraft, models, item, hat, save. One thing I forgot to do that I need to do is set how it looks. So if I go to the display tab, you see when it's on the head, it's not looking correct. So let me just move it up. Let me scale it a bit. There you go. And why not rotate it? There we go. So now we've got our model save, saved as hat JSON. If we then go to our Minecraft models item hat, we can see here we got, this one doesn't have a parent because it's a custom 3D model. We've got our textures and they're both item hat. Particle isn't needed for this one, but particle would be the uh, block particles that are shown when you break it if it's a block. But yeah, this is our model that we made. There's our display on the head for rotations and scale. If we now go in game and we can F3T reload, we can see, it's hard to see there, but if we go to third person, we can see I'm holding it. Now I need to get it on my head. So if we go um, slash item replace entity 
myself armor.head and I'm going to replace the item on my head with our custom thing without accidentally pressing hashtag. And then you'll see it's put it on my head. I just cleared my inventory. There we go. We got the item on my head. My second skin layer is clipping through it, so we can just tweak that quickly in Blockbench. There's our hat. So that is how you use custom model data in 1.21.4. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.